I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. Last week, we left you with a brief overview of our epic Victron setup. We have a very technical question in with all the tech folks with Victron Energy for the proper wiring and compatibility for the all-important isolation transformer, which, because we're waiting for the answer, puts this project on hold. So we decided to load up the crew and head to the Miami Boat Show. All right, after a ridiculous, what was it, almost four hours in traffic to get down here, um, we're finally here. And uh, Kim and Mads are gonna go check into the Airbnb and we are gonna go inside and, uh, you excited, Sid? I'm excited. <laughs> That's all you have to say? That's all I have to say. <laughs> we stopped by some of our favorite vendors to say hi and check out all their new products. And we got to meet some awesome folks like David with Latitudes and Attitudes magazine. And most importantly, we got to meet some of you. All right, guys, we are at day two of our boat show experience. This is Friday and we are over here at the sailboats. So, um, we're gonna walk through and get some ideas on, well, all kinds of cool stuff that we could be building in the boat. We're gonna say hi to everybody at Leopard and hang out at the booth and see their new stuff and... <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> let's go. All right, let's go. I won't bore you with yet another boat review from yet another boat show, but rather give you some of the highlights of the things that we love, like the huge sugar scoops and flybridge on the brand new Lagoon 51. On this boat, the elevated salon, causing low headroom, and the ultra-narrow companionways were huge don'ts for me. The Privilege 5 series hits a big love all the way around. We really love all the little things that they do, like this little feature in the shower that might have to make its way into my shower on the 50. Don't forget to go to the website and order your very own Dauntless gear. We'll put a link in the description below. Here we find it. Who is this? Ah! Gentlemen, <laughs> it's Doug. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> nice to see you again. Good to see you too. Rounding out the show, we stopped at the pool to see Flyboard World Champion Kristen Smoyer. All right, now so the rest of the video here, we are going to jump into an interview that I really wanted to share with you guys. Right before the Miami Boat Show, one of our partners, Battleborn Batteries, made a huge, I'll call it epic announcement about lithium batteries for the marine world. They are the first company to actually produce a ABYC compliant battery for the marine industry. And it is, it, it's such a cool deal. So I wanna share this interview with Dr. Dennis Ferris. He is the CEO and lead engineer for Dragonfly Energy, which is the producer of uh, Battleborn batteries. So let's go back to the convention center, jump into the interview, and let Dennis tell us all about all the new features with this new battery and battery monitoring system that they've come up with. All right, and stay tuned for the end of the video for a really exciting announcement. We are here at Battleborn's booth at the Miami Boat Show, and we wanted to make a stop 
because Dennis Ferris, Dr. Dennis Ferris, who is the CEO of Dragonfly Energy, which brings us Battleborn batteries and wake speed and a bunch of other really cool tech, is gonna walk us through some really groundbreaking, new, safe battery technology that, that's available for the boating industry. So, uh, Dennis, if you wouldn't mind, walk us through what sure. we've got. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Ty. Absolutely. Um, so, there's a, there's a lot to present here because okay. uh, we kind of we threw out a lot of functionality out there okay. in, in our battery systems. And the core of it has to do with the ability of the batteries to communicate with each other and with the outside world. Right. And a lot of folks have been talking about smart batteries over the last, I don't know, five, six years. Which, which is really just a BMS, right? Well, it's a BMS that will allow you to communicate via Bluetooth okay. to a cell phone or something. So, that's something that a lot of people asked us, like, why don't you have Bluetooth? And okay. I, so we wanted to do it a little differently. We, we wanted to do it right. So the way that we did it is every one of our batteries, this is a, our 112. We've got okay. our 112, GC2, GC3, AD, all these different uh, models are going to be able to be equipped with what we called Dragonfly Intelligence. Okay. Dragonfly Intelligence. So this allows us to communicate, not Bluetooth, but wirelessly, in a mesh network. Okay. So each battery is a node communicating with every other battery and other accessories that we have in the system. Okay. So even if my phone isn't on the boat, the batteries all know what each other battery is doing yes. and it's monitoring the system safely even when I'm not present. That's to right. To watch it. That's right. Because I'm never going to watch it. I'm never going to be over top of the battery every single time keeping track of every battery. I've got, I've got sailing to do. <laughs> exactly. You, you don't want to have to worry about that. Right. But. But if you do, let's say you want to know what's going on, which, what okay. is your system doing. If, if you're looking at one battery with your cell phone, that's great. But that's not important if you have eight batteries. Right. That's not important if you have a 48 volt or a 24 volt system and multiple components contributing to that right. configuration. Right. So what we did that was different was we wanted you to still be able to, to look at the system with your cell phone. Okay. But have information about the whole system. So we've developed what we call the hub, the Dragonfly okay. Intelligence Hub. This is also on that same network, wireless network, communicating with all the batteries, okay. but it will be configured to the configuration of your battery. So you could be in parallel or series, or series parallel. It'll know where each battery is, okay. and so it will be able to determine things like your balance. Is your system in balance? So if I take a bunch of these batteries and put them together, and we have a 48 volt system on our boat. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that I can put these in series and run them at 48 volt, and it will monitor it as if it's a 48 volt system and balance it as such. It will, it will be able to determine every battery in the system okay. and all the parameters of it, actually every cell, but every battery pack in the system. Nice. So if they're in, if they're in a 48 volt series configuration, what that means is if they're in balance, they're all at the same voltage. Nice. So if they're not, it will flag it. Okay. Right? And what does it do when it flags it? That's a good question. I'll get to that later. Okay. Though. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll be so, so we, we, we can do things. I, like I said, there's, I'm, I'm going to just throw out a ton of functionality at you for, all right. for this. Um, but if, if they're in parallel, okay. you expect them to have the same current. If one is delivering right. 10 amps and one is delivering 100 amps, you're not in balance. So right. you want every battery to be pulling the same amount of energy out and depositing the same amount of energy in. So they're all sharing an equal load. They're sharing equal load. They're not aging differently. You know, if if you have a system designed where one battery is you know 100 yards away and one is very close, obviously this one's going to take the bulk of the load, right? Yeah. So that's, if that's your system design, fine, and it can learn. Okay, well that's how they wanted to design it. It's not a great design, but that's how that's how they so wanted. It's going to compensate for bad design. So it could it could compensate <laughs> for level. bad design, but but if it is used to having a, in a certain way, like this is delivering. 30 amps and they're all delivering 30 amps and then all of a sudden one's delivering 10 amps. Okay. That could be a number of things, right? It yeah. could be that you've got a uh, a bad connection or something, yeah. right? You wouldn't you you wouldn't know. This wouldn't know that there's a bad connection, but it'll be able to flag that one is not operating. It tells in me balance. where to look. So if I'm troubleshooting a system, troubleshooting a problem, I know exactly where to look instead of having to that's hire right. somebody to come in and tear the entire system apart and figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's, that's right. why we wanted a hub to aggregate the data to deliver that. Okay. And by the way, this can deliver the information via Bluetooth to your cell okay. phone or your iPad, but it can also deliver it via CAN bus, NEMA 2K. Okay. Um, it can also deliver it 
via any other communication system you want it to be connected. You can have a hub, multiple hubs, all on the same network delivering, one is going NEMA 2K, one is going some other CAN bus protocol, okay. one is going VE bus, whatever. Nice. So it's, okay. But it's all the same system. So how else besides the app can I get this information out? Can I put it on, with, can I integrate it with my Victron and monitor it remotely? You can, and this can also be wireless to a router. Perfect. So we have Starlink on the boat, and I can wire it up to that. So as long as I've got internet connectivity, and I'm not on the boat, you can monitor it from anywhere. Perfect. So that's okay. what that's what this does. All right. Okay. So that's that's one set. Now right. the communication also allows us to do something else, which pertains to the new ABYC uh, E13 requirements for lithium battery systems. Can I stop you for a yes. second? I, I think that a lot of people don't realize how big this is. Everyone here is, you know, I hear all this mumbo jumbo about, you can't insure your boat if there's lithium, or lithium's not safe on a boat, or what have you, because, well, ABYC hasn't given the blessing, so to speak, because as of now, no lithium battery really meets all the safety requirements that ABYC would like to see in the battery system. Is that in First of all, there are, there are no safety requirements. We're Suggestions? Just, they're dipping a toe here. Okay. And they're saying, hey, do what the manufacturer wants. Okay. Plus, here's a couple other suggestions. But the okay. suggestions are good suggestions. They'll probably start to creep into the requirement territory at some point. But that's where Fair we enough. are right now with E13. Okay. At least there's something out there. And one of the, uh, one of the biggest issues with lithium batteries is that uh, they tend to hold the same voltage till they're close to dead and then they kind of fall off a cliff. Right. So um, that's actually a benefit too because it means you get constant power out of the batteries. Right, you're not getting this diminishing, you're not getting motors laboring because the power's, you know, that, the voltage yeah. is dropping or what have you. So that, that's that, right. That's a good thing. But what, what the ABYC wanted was they don't want to be caught by surprise if, if, it, if, it, if it either goes off from low voltage or high voltage or temperature or whatever. Okay. So one of the requirements is they need a warning. Not requirements, suggestions. 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 One of the suggestions is there has to be a warning before a cutoff happens. Okay. And it has to be audible or visual. So Audible we, and visual. Or visual. So or that's visual. what it says. That's okay. what it says. Audible or visual. All right. So we have our... Uh, what we call our Dragonfly Intelligence Ion. Also okay. on the network, this is input, output, and on the network. That's why we called it that. Oh, perfect. So this provides a lot more functionality. And one of the things is, it will be able to take the information from the whole system, like there is a uh, shut off that's approaching and trigger a warning. So Nice. Because uh, right now, if you have a traditional lithium ion battery, and the BMS inside has reads low voltage or over voltage. Mm -hmm. It just turns off. It just turns off. Right, and you yeah. don't. And if one battery in, a, in a, an entire network of batteries or or a, a, a battery system turns off, it doesn't tell any of the other batteries what's going on, and it doesn't notify you. Mm -hmm. that, is that that's correct, right? That's correct. And but if they're all in parallel, you wouldn't really know. You wouldn't really know, right? Okay. They're in series. You'll know because it all right. turns off, right? right? If they're in series, so. Um, but this is in reference to the entire system shutting down. We want to let everybody know that your batteries are about done. Right. You need to make you need to take action to recharge your batteries. That's right. Okay. And when a battery shuts off, it's because one cell is is at a low voltage okay. condition. Right. So right. even if one cell shuts off in one pack, this will allow notification for the user. Okay. You can actually program it however you want. Like yes. notify notify me when you know, a pack reaches this level or something, any pack in the system, you know. Okay. So, so they, it, it is very uh, user configurable. Okay, and well. I'm assuming there's an awesome instruct in installation manual that's going to give you choices to um, choose all of those warning lists at whatever level that you want. We have standard warnings. Okay. We're, we're going to have stand, like this okay. is what so they're in not, our experience. So they don't have to program all of this stuff they don't have to do any BYC manual. Right. It's already in there. That's right. Okay. So okay. when I say, I mean, it is, is there going to be some programmability? Yeah, but okay. people don't usually. Usually an OEM will care about that. Okay. And in that case, we'll just do it for them anyway. Fair enough. So it's plug and play for the most part. Yes. Okay. This, is this is meant to be very easy, very plug and play. In fact, the, the configuration with the hub mm -hmm. is going to be simple, as simple as basically scanning the QR codes on the batteries. Oh, nice. So you can say, this is my system. Actually, we can scan each individual battery have, uh, component. Yes, you can scan every individual really cool. battery. That's oh, really crap. cool. There's a password on this. 
Ten, ten, ten. <laughs> we'll cut that out, Dennis. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's the battery. So we can configure okay. like four batteries in parallel. Okay. And then you basically, these are all, this is a demo here, but you'd be able to click on a battery and then go and scan the battery. The battery that's okay. actually there. Right. And then once it's all once it's all linked together, then you can go in and you know that's your system, and you can go in and look at what what each battery is doing in terms of state of charge, okay. temperature, and voltages, and all that stuff. Nice. So that's it is meant to be very user friendly and easily configurable. Excellent. Well, and I think this is what's been really missing because right now. I'm seeing bigger and bigger systems go in. And as the systems get bigger and bigger, there's no real way to monitor what everything's doing. You mm -hmm. can't really get a, an idea of what individual, I call them soldiers, that are all charging forward in this, in this um, fight to keep you powered on the, on the water. And if one drops out, there's no, there was no general to say, hey, by the way, we're losing people on the back end and there's something that we need to do or pay attention to, which arguably is rare, mm -hmm. but we're not, Safety isn't about frequency, it's about you know saving saving people or saving boats or life or what have you in extreme circumstances. And I think that this just makes me feel warm and fuzzy that yeah. you can actually and, and not keep just track safety, just reliability. And you yeah. know, you expect to have a certain amount of, of capacity. We yeah. I mean we build we take care of the safety. Yeah. Our batteries are are the safest on the market. I mean they're they're like lithium iron phosphate cells, they're all separated, they're, you know, you can't get any propagation of any thermal event. So they're okay. excessively safe. However, you want them to all work. And, you know, we, we warranty them. And so... That's the, an impressive warranty, too. I don't know anybody that warranties a battery as long as you guys do. But, so. And we, you know, we, we stick to it. And yeah. when, uh, when folks call in, we've got the best technical support staff in the industry. And they're trying to diagnose issues with the customers, sometimes on boats, in, in the field, and you know, in an so RV. So is this going to help them do that? Oh my God, yes. That's. I mean, they are so thankful for this yeah. because now they can be like, I want you to tell me what each battery is doing. Is okay. there a warning? This it'll tell you like, is there's an error here? There's an error because this battery has low voltage, or this battery has high voltage, or this battery has a mal malfunction in the circuitry or whatever. We'll okay. know like that, and then it's like, and it's not always easy to the battery, it could be the installation, and that happens a lot. I mean, it's almost always the installation, to be yeah. fair. Loose but... grounds, loose <laughs> grounds are the biggest, <laughs> are, the, are the biggest challenge I have, but yeah. And that, so this, if, if we're able to find problem areas in the system that's identified on the hub, mm -hmm. then I think that's really important, because I call, I get calls too. Mm -hmm. How am I gonna solve this problem? Where is the problem at? Mm -hmm. Well then, I have to teach them how to go in and troubleshoot it, right, and this right. takes a lot of that. It's, you know, our, our sales team uh, spend hours on the phone with a customer, teaching them how to use a multimeter, showing them where to put the probes. You know, it's yeah. really hard to diagnose systems. And like I said, it's usually not the batteries, but right. the first thing people blame is the batteries, because that's the new thing in the system. Yeah. And so if we can say, okay, we can definitively say it's not the batteries, now let's go looking for you know, why this battery is not delivering the current that it should right. be delivering. Oh, it looks like you've got a, a bad fuse or something. Now, you know, it's easier to hone in on that. Fair so, enough. Where do we move on from here? So you, you had alluded to actions that you can take yes. for, for imbalance. So okay. as folks get into higher voltages, okay. not 12, but like 24, 36, 48 volts, mm -hmm. what's the hardest thing to deal with in those systems? The hardest thing to deal with in larger voltage systems is to keep everything in balance. Balance, Yeah, that's what it is. So when you have cells in series, mm -hmm. they don't share current, right? But they drift. So they yeah. get out of balance for a variety of different reasons. Yeah. And so with a 12 volt battery, and actually with any, with any battery out there, they typically have what's called a passive balancing circuit. Okay. It's, it's really easy. There's, each cell is a voltage monitor and a switch and a resistor, and it, if it exceeds a certain voltage, it just bleeds through that resistor, right? right. It's good for 12 volts. It works great. Yeah, as you get to higher mean. voltages, it doesn't work as well. And yeah. as you get to 48 volts, it's just it, it's going to get out of balance right. at some point. And when it gets out of balance, you you drop in capacity, number one, and number two, you will you will hit low voltage disconnect and high voltage disconnect sooner than you think. So it's important that you do keep it in balance, right? Okay. So uh, 
When you have large batteries, they use what's called an active balancing system to keep the cells in balance, which right. means you're sharing current, you're sharing energy from one cell to another cell. That takes switches and capacitors and a lot more circuitry that add too much cost to a system like this. Right. So these systems typically have passive balancing. Okay. So now let's say that uh, you have you have four batteries in parallel to make a 48 volt system. Okay. And we have an example of a device right here. This is our Dragonfly Wing. This is the new 48 volt product, okay. which is comprised of four 12 volt blocks, all connected to each other, okay. with all the internal, you know, the, the circuitry at the bottom here. Same Bluetooth, same wireless, same CAN bus, all that stuff. But this is doing active balancing now. So this is, we call it hybrid balancing. Okay. Because we still have all the passive balancing going on, but if those series packs get out of balance, it'll notify you, and you can do one thing. You can hit a switch, or you can actually use your, your app, okay. and it just basically switches them from series to parallel. Really? And puts them on another bus bar. There's, okay. There's actually a ground bus bar, a series bus bar, and a parallel bus bar. Okay. So then you can charge a 48 volt battery with a 12 volt charger, and it gets them all in balance on really? one charge. So that's how we do it. That's amazing, because right now you're really limited to, I mean, we've got 48 volt on our boat, and we've got 12 volt on the boat, mm -hmm. and I can't charge them. I have, to, I have to have two completely separate charging mm -hmm. uh, ecosystems to be able to make those, to make that happen. Now obviously this will have to be disconnected from any sort of inversion or load at 48 volt if you're right. going to do that. Right. But that can be happen with the switch, and you can charge all that up and reset it, right. and that's, that's amazing. So there's a, a number of cases where this is useful. If you're using 48 volts all day, yes. and you're not charging it on the water, you can come back and charge it on shore at 12 volts. So you only need okay. a 12 volt charger to charge this. If you have multiple wings, okay. um, <clears throat> you can take one offline and balance it while the others are still online. So you could have both 48 and 12 volt at the same time if you've got multiple wings really? and switch them back and forth. And the last thing is this can be auto configurable. So it can be a 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt battery, each wing. That's really cool. Because now I have to, again, I have to have two separate systems because I need 12 volt because everything in the marine world is 12 volt for the most part. Right. But 48 volt is where I'm inverting 15 kilowatts of power to run induction cooktops and all of that stuff. So having multiples of these in and they can all either work together or I can separate them out and I can do all that with the app. Yes. Yep. Or, or automatic. That's, or that's amazing. So, <laughs> it's amazing. And then we went a step further. So as uh, the circuitry that's in here that allows this, this pack, this battery to do what it does, we're going to uh, sell it separately as okay. what we call the Flex. The Flex is a device that's also going to be on the network with all the batteries and you could do this same thing with any four of our batteries. So you can get like four GC3s okay. or four GC2s. And it wouldn't have to be in this box. It doesn't have to be in this box. You just connect it all to the Flex. It has the three outputs, the ground, the, the 12 parallel and the 48, okay. or the voltage selectable one. And then it does all the same thing. So if this form factor doesn't fit in my boat or my house or my RV, I can just buy the products together and That's the text is gonna transfer yep. over. You so, can put four batteries in four separate places, connect them all to the hub, and that's where, I'm sorry, to the flex. Okay. And then that's where the output would be. That's amazing. Well so, done. See, well there's, done. there's a lot in there. So when is it gonna come to market? That's, now I want it today, so how, <laughs> how can I get it now? Uh, it's coming to market soon. It's going to come okay. out to market in the spring. All right, spring of 23. Uh, so yeah. if you guys are watching um, later on. So spring of 2023. We feel like as we've been selling so many batteries over the years, we, we keep encountering the same sort of issues, whether okay. we go to higher voltages or large parallel, parallel systems. And we basically tried to implement this functionality to address a lot of these issues. Well, we'll be waiting for the spring. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You, I really appreciate it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So keep an eye out, guys. This will be hitting the channel again. We will be talking about all of this as it comes out, and. Uh, maybe just put it in the boat. We'll see what happens. So um, thanks again, and uh, we're looking forward to everything, everything that you guys have new coming out as, as you're able to release it. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dennis. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end, guys. Here is the special announcement. 
You guys know that Battleborn Batteries has sponsored us with our Victron equipment and some of our 12 volt lithium batteries, but they've chosen us to be one of six content creators across all different platforms to be able to offer a special uh, exclusive discount. That is going to be $50 off any one of their batteries. All you have to do is use the link below in the description and use code Dauntless during checkout to get big savings on an awesome set of batteries for your project.